because a good friend asked them to be there for her. Um, this was simply because like she just signed up for it. And I, I think she's just better. She was better than that. I don't know what her life is now or, um, what's bothering her at the core. I just think she was, she was, she had better options. I would have liked to seen her go back to acting and, uh, pick up where she left off before Charlie Sheen. She's dealing, her daughter is a big OnlyFans star now, and she had issues with that, but so did Charlie. But apparently the daughter just bought a house and a car. So to your point of valuing money, Denise did say in an interview that it's all okay with the family now because she bought a house and a car. I'm just filling you in. So maybe <laughs> she's dealing with that and yeah. other things. Well, you know, no offense to Charlie because God, don't we all love him even when he messes up. But what did she think was going to happen? Charlie Sheen's the father of her child. I mean, <laughs> come on now. So being brought up in Beverly Hills isn't always a good thing because you get a skewed sense of the rest of the world and what the rest of the world deems is ethical and what's normal is that in that fishbowl, that's what, you know, that's why I took my girls out of Beverly Hills. I was like, I do not want this being their moral compass. And it was probably the best thing we ever did was coming back to Arizona where I was born and raised. And there are real people, although half of California has moved here now, I will say. That's I, I get it. Like half of New York has moved to Florida. So yeah. it's kind of the same thing. Bandoning anything, ship. anything yep. else like stick out to you as strange with the notes that you've taken about this episode? I mean, there was some humor as you check your notes. I think it was funny when they showed the two, the two cooks in the kitchen and the guy was like, should we go out there while they're still yelling? The other one's like, oh, oh I, I know, know that was funny. <laughs> that was really funny. I thought it was funny where, you know, I'll ask Garcelle, like, where'd you get that necklace? She said, Zara. See, Garcelle is is real. Garcelle, I think, is a great housewife. I think she keeps it real. Yeah, yeah. I like her too. Uh, and obviously her sons mean everything to her. Uh, the they, sons. Were, they were brought up in the business, so we'll see what happens with their stories and how those unfold. Because when you're brought up in the business, you need your parents grounding you hard, you know, and anchoring you to make sure you don't sort of fly off into space um, on your whatever path you're on or idea you come up with that you have somebody giving you common sense advice. She seems like somebody who would do that. Um, is a father in the picture? I'm, I mean, I don't know. It sounds like she had a bad, unfortunate relationship with him that he had a wandering eye. And that's unfortunate because she's a beautiful woman. Um, yeah, I think she's real, but I think you're seeing these housewives that want to be on the periphery and they don't want to get pulled in as the crux of a storyline because they know what that means, but they're thinking, I'm just going to stay on the periphery, cash my checks. I'm on camera, so it'll be fine, but I'm not going to open my mouth and say what I really think. And I'm not going to get pulled down that rabbit hole of drama that they're going to try and drag me down. So I think you're seeing a new generation that really tries to stay on the sidelines. But I think they also know that if you do that for too many seasons, you're going to get fired because they need the drama to stay relevant. That's how Crystal is too. She kind mm -hmm. of stays on the, right. It's like a fine yeah. line of like, let's see how many seasons we can squeak this out. Yeah. And then you either, it's your season and you either have to get dirty and they're going to do you dirty or you're going to get fired. It's, it's doesn't last forever. Yeah. And I think that's what was so interesting about this season is that Kyle's always tried to play the victim. She plays a victim. She brings on villains. She sets up storylines to make her look like a victim. Um, she's, she's, um, a confused person, but, um, I, I would just say this season, she seems to have brought her real life into the reality show because she knew it was going to get out anyways. That's what I think. That's just me. And so she wanted to be able to control the fallout in the press and with um, how she was viewed by fans. So all of what you're seeing is very controlled by her, the narrative. And when I saw Morgan 
again, there was nothing. And I think Morgan probably, again, not somebody that is, she's a lot of people who are on stage and are comfortable with their fans aren't comfortable on television, but also if the relationship is real or not, because if you're really coming out saying, I love this woman, you know, or even coming out saying we're best friends, she's my BFF. You'd be very relaxed around each other because you're so close, but that's not what we saw. So to me, it sort of was reinforcing that they're just helping each other out. And Kyle needed to feel sexy and desired. And so, you know, the video from what I hear was steamy. You watched it, right? Yeah, it's it? steamy. Yeah. Steamy. And I didn't want to watch that. So I took a hard pass on that. But um, so she wanted to be seen in that light. So here my husband's leaving me, but this other person really wants me and she's younger. This is great. This is a great way to buffer myself. And then Maurizio has this relationship with the dancing with the stars partner, which I don't think is a relationship. Um, so they have, again, this all goes into the storyline. It makes people watch because they want to see what's going on. So then when you've got Kyle crying, saying it hurts, seeing him hold her hand, it's like, didn't you just full skin on skin make out or something in a video? And you guys are a little crazy because you're taking pictures like you're a family, but you're all doing your own thing in the tabloids on the side with other people. Whether they're doing it or not, they're giving the illusion that they are. So I just think that would be very confusing for their kids. Again, it's just how I see things. It's how I digest what I'm seeing. Um, it just doesn't seem real. And the tattoos are supposed to drive home the fact that this is real because they're permanent. The one she just got was awfully light. That doesn't look like anything that can't be removed pretty easily. <laughs> You it think it's hurt. a fake tattoo <laughs> or a tenna. I just, I don't see the point of it. And then wasn't there a scene where Kyle had the power to pick a tattoo or she wanted to pick one for Morgan. And I believe she put a K on Morgan, like branded her like cattle with yeah. her initial. Um, I think that speaks to Kyle's insecurity as well. It's like, well, my husband didn't do this for me, but you're going to without your consent. Cause you don't know what I'm putting on you. Like, what is that? So Morgan has a lot of tattoos. Maybe she doesn't care. Maybe she doesn't keep it or has it turned into something else, you know, that can be done with art. And, um, so all of it just seems so crazy. Yeah. I just look, I don't, I mean, I'm not closed minded. I just don't, I mean, this one is, look at people, and listen, if you're dating, I understand it. There's older men that date younger women all the right. time. Vice, That all makes sense. But just to be Fine. pure friends, this right. one is 28. Right. You're 56. I'm not aging. It's just, right. I just, you were from, I don't see. I just well, don't see you, it. Yes, what could you have in common? 